Good evening. Good evening, Fisher. Good evening. Good evening. So we are in the session number three of this last week. So we are going to complete this hour and then we are just going to have one more hour to complete the module. Tomorrow is the last day. So we are going to try to complete um, the last topic because we just have one more topic on the platform and um, we are going to like do different things to complete this information in these two uh, different hours. You know that we are going to have one today and the other tomorrow. And I know that um, some of you, many of you, or I don't know if all of you have completed the last part of this course, that is the final exam. So you know that uh, tomorrow is the last day, so you need to complete that part too. Or I don't know, maybe you have completed a long time ago. So this is just like a reminder. Um, we are going to have a grammatical topic. Um, the last topic is going to be like a complement of the structures that we were like learning during this month. So in this case, it's just a complement, like something else, something extra uh, related to this, um, to this kind of categories. So in this case, we're going to see what are uh, the elements that we're going to see on this um, new topic. Uh, I know that maybe you have seen or you have listened, or maybe you use this kind of, uh, a structure this kind of sentences, this kind of words in everyday conversations. And we are going to see uh, the name of these elements and how to use these, um, like this structure or these um, specific words that are related to the use of the language. And for the last, um, like hour, the last activity we are going to do, uh, reading activity, but that is for tomorrow. Today we are just going to base on uh, information, but we have something to do that is an activity. This activity is going to be in another document and you are going to write um, something. But um, I think that in the middle of the session, I'm going to explain you what is this activity about because we are going to have like a couple of minutes to complete that activity. And we are going to do it step by step. First is the explanation. Second one is the, uh, the exercise itself in which you are going to write something very specific because it's a, a writing exercise and we are going to have a very a specific document um, to do that activity. And then the last part is read the information that you are going to write on that exercise. And of course, you are going to have a very specific space. I have a, like a table there uh, or a chart or something like that in which you are going to find different spaces and we have one for each of the participants of the, uh, the session. So in that case, you are not going to be confused with the space and you are not going to know in which space you are going to write. You have the specific like space on the document and you are going to write one of your names and you are going to do the exercise. But this information of this part, we are going to see it in a couple of minutes like in 30 minutes, I think. So we are going to begin and we are going to see what is the topic that we are going to develop today. But give me a second, I'm charging the document.
we are going to see first um a short video. Good evening. Good evening. We are going to go first to the platform because we are going to see a short video that is like a something introductory. Vamos a ver algo como una introducción de um, de ese documento y vamos a um, a ver esa parte, ¿verdad? Bastante sencilla, bastante corta, donde vamos a entender de qué se trata el tema. Vamos a ver eh, algunos ejemplos de las palabras que vamos a estar utilizando. Para eso, nosotros tenemos el, el tema de hoy, que son los quantifiers. Ese es el tema que vamos a estar desarrollando. And we are going to see a short video that is related to this uh, topic about the quantifiers. And it is a grammar focus because we are going to base on, um, on grammar. Because this kind of topics is to give more details or to um, have a very specific structure. There are words that we can use in a daily conversation. Maybe we can use these words when we are having a conversation with our friends or when we are like practicing something. Maybe we are listening an audiobook or maybe we are listening a song. We are listening or watching a movie and we can hear different words. And those words are part of a very specific structure. Muchas de las palabras, ustedes saben que son un, eh, una estructura específica, tienen un significado específico, tienen un uso específico, y estas que vamos a ver hoy tienen igual un uso específico, pero así como les, les digo, nosotros podemos escuchar esas palabras, nosotros podemos leer esas palabras, podemos incluso utilizarlas en una conversación diaria, y nosotros decimos, ah, this is a word that I know. And I know what is the meaning and I know how to use it. But we are going to see that we have different elements, different structure, different categories that we need to, to pay attention to because they have like a very specific use. Maybe you are using this word like in a, in a sentence that is not related to the whole thing, but you are like using it like something normal. But you know that in English, we have like different categories of words. And maybe the same word is used for um, a couple of different meanings and different situations. Una sola palabra puede ser utilizada de diferentes formas, ya sea como adjetivo, como adverbio, como pronombre, como verbo, sujeto, you know, different things. And in this case, we are going to focus on the quantifiers. If you can notice, mm, this word like called quantifier, it has to be with quantity. Mm, we are going to see what is the meaning of this one and what is the specification of the information that we have about the quantifier. We are going to see the video and then we are going to have the explanation of the quantifiers. And if we don't have enough time to complete the information about the quantifiers, we are going to have the, like, mm, a couple of informations, a couple of details about the quantifiers today. Then we are going to uh, have the exercise because we are going to have, like, mm, two exercises. We are going to do two exercises. And when we complete the information about the quantifiers, we are going to have another exercise. Because in this case, the exercises are not um, related 100% to the information that I have for you about the quantifiers. We have two exercises in which uh, we are going to put the information that we have in our uh, heads. And in one of these is, um, like rewriting some sentences using quantifiers. And in the other exercise is that you are going to put into practice the knowledge that you have about writing 
something specific. And then tomorrow we are going to have the exercise that is related to the information that I have for you. So we are going to begin with the video. So we are going to pay attention to the information that we have there. So let's begin. This time we'll talk about quantifiers. When we don't know the exact percentage of something, we use words like some, most, a few. Stay and learn more quantifiers and how to use them. Quantifiers. All families have only one child. Nearly all families have only one child. Most families have only one child. Many families are smaller these days. A lot of families are smaller these days. Some families are smaller these days. Not many couples have more than one child. A few couples have more than one child. Few couples have more than one child. No one gets married before the age of 18. Notice how these quantifiers have an estimated percentage. If you want to make reference to 100%, you may say all, and then you work down the scale depending on the percentage you want to refer to. Follow me in this example. Nearly all women work nowadays. Nearly all, quantifier. Women, plural noun. So in other words, all quantifiers come before plural nouns, except no one. No one gets married before the age of 18. No one, quantifier, gets the verb. As a tip, ask your teacher to remind you about count nouns so you are able to use these quantifiers. Type in two examples using any quantifier you want. Fires. Okay, in this case, we have something very important at the beginning of this video, that is the following thing. Something, we use words like some, most, a few. Stay and learn more quantifiers and how to use them. Quantifiers. Give me a second. I have a problem with my... Mm, with my computer so i don't know what is happening i just have a black um a screen so give me a second i don't know what is happening okay I think it came back. I don't know what happened. Um, but it was like a black screen. And then it, I think that it keep going. So I'm sorry for that. So we're going to continue with uh, the information that I was like trying to explain to you. And I hope that this one is not going to happen again. Okay, in this case, um, I was saying that we have a very 
uh, important information about the quantifiers because they are like a specific words and they have a very specific use um, to this thing. And you know that when we are talking about uh, something uh, specific or something that we need to, to know or we want to tell, um, I don't know if you want to say something because you write something on the chat. Teacher, no se escucha bien. Oh, okay, give me a second. ahora ya se escucha mejor o todavía se escucha no sé raro ahorita sí ya ¿eh? ah, ok cuando se acercó el, el micrófono se escuchó mejor ok eh, I think that I have problems with my computer already uh, this one is like it has a couple of of years and I know that it is kind of hard for it because um, she is having a lot of work in a couple of of years so i think that i need to do something very soon with this um, kind of uh, problems with my computer so i was saying that we have a very specific information at the beginning of the video that is like the the meaning or the most important thing about the uh, quantifiers on the video we have like a very specific phrase that she is saying when this video began and is like, what is the use or in which cases we are going to use these quantifiers? But I'm not going to, to share this, um, the, the screen again with the video because uh, when I was like sharing the uh, the video it was like the black screen so i i am kind of afraid to do the same thing and it comes to the same problem so in this case um we are going to to see what is the the information that she said um about the quantifiers at the beginning of the video she said that that we use the quantifiers when we don't know the exact percentage of the situation. Cuando no sabemos en qué cantidad o de qué forma, ¿verdad? Cuando no estamos 100% seguros de uh, en qué medida suceden las cosas, nosotros utilizamos estos quantifiers. Y teníamos en la imagen que se presentaba también en el video, Algunos de ellos tenemos el 100% en 0%. Tenemos el 100% que es cuando se cumplen todos o cuando es como eh, más seguro, ¿verdad? De que suceda. And we have the 0% que es el 0% o que no estamos muy seguros de que se esté cumpliendo. Y obviamente vamos de arriba hacia abajo. And we have different words like all, nearly all, must, Many, a lot of, some, not many, a few, few, and no one. But give me a sec. So in this case, we are going to base our information in this like image that we have on the video. And we have different like um, phrases and we have three words related to the same phrase. And we have all families have only one child. Estamos basándonos en que um, algunos de las personas, verdad, en, en ciertas familias, en ciertas sociedades tienen este tipo de De situaciones. And it says, all families have one, uh, only one child. Todas las familias tienen solo un hijo. We know that it is not like this. And we have like differences uh, 
depending on the family, depending on the people, depending on the country. And then we have the second one. That is another like expression and it says nearly all families have only one child. Estamos diciendo que casi todas las personas o que casi todas las familias pues tienen solo un hijo. And we can base this information on the, the situation, the real situation that we are having right now. And you know that it's kind of complicated to have like more than three uh, children, but we are going to see. Then we have another one that is must. Most families have only one child. Muchas familias um, tienen solo un hijo. And I think that this one is kind of a better option. Creo que es una opción mucho mejor de, en lugar de decir todas las familias tienen solo un hijo. Most families. Muchas familias, ¿no? La mayoría. Luego tenemos, ya bajando un poco de nivel del 100% que ya teníamos, we can say that this one is like 50% or 75, tal vez un 75%, 60, maybe. Many families are smaller these days. Muchas familias son más pequeñas estos días. And I think that this one is true because uh, we have just like one or two ch uh, children and that's it. A lot of families are smaller these days. Some families are smaller these days. Then we have, in this case, maybe a 30%, un 30%. Not many couples have more one, uh, not many couples have more than one child. No muchas parejas tienen más de un hijo. A few couples have more than one child. Algunas parejas tienen más de un hijo. Few couples have more than one child. Muy pocas parejas tienen más de un hijo. And zero percent, no one gets married before the age of 18. Nadie se casa antes de los 18. So in that, that case, you can see that um, we have different words that we can use to express like the situation. Because in this case, we are talking about like the... Um, a daily life thing. We are talking about um, being married. We are talking about uh, having a family. We are talking about children. So in this case, we can base this information into our um, real life context in el mundo en el que nosotros estamos viviendo básicamente. So I'm going to put the image on the document and we are going to work based on that information first. And you are going to see what is the, the, like the first activity that we are going to perform. And we are here. Okay, here. And we have another image. Remember that we were talking about the percentage yesterday. So in this case, we are going to continue from that part. So we have here this one. And we were talking about this other uh, information yesterday. But I think the screen is loading on. Right now it's complete. So we were talking about Typical families yesterday, and we were talking about the percentage of the different categories in the home, the working family, and the marriage. And we are like thinking about the percentages of the the situations in in this chart, but but in this case, it's based on our country. It's the same thing with the second information. We are going to base those information into the reality that we are living in this moment in our country. Maybe we are not part of the of the percentage or we are like different from the things that they are saying on the images, but we are just going to think about what is happening right now in this matter of things. 
vamos a, a pensar en cuál es la situación que está viviendo nuestra sociedad en estos días basados en esta información. Ya vimos que nos estamos basando en la familia eh, en, este, en esta sección número 5. Y en la imagen que veíamos ayer de las familias típicas, tenemos como porcentajes de las familias en Estados Unidos. Ahora, if we can uh, think about the situation in our country, in the first one, we are completely different from the families on the United States. Because it says that 41% of homes have three or more televisions. Aquí ya empieza nuestra diferencia. Ya dice que el 41% de familias o de casas tiene más de tres televisores. Ahora, en nuestro país es completamente diferente. We can say that a 10% if I am not like. I don't know, just put in an example. Like 10% of homes have three or more televisions because we are like um, trying to have just one or two. I don't know. But it is not really common to have more than three televisions in our home. Um, 63 of families almost always eat dinner together. I think that I can say that it's more than that here in our country. Maybe 80%, tal vez un 80% de las familias eh, cenan juntos. It will be. I don't know. 55% uh, of mothers with young children work. I think that is almost the same thing here. 78 of high school students have jobs. Here is not like this. Maybe 50% or less, un 15% o menos, de estudiantes de bachillerato que logran tener un trabajo. Because we were saying yesterday that it's not like really common to see this kind of things here in our country um, because of the age. And if these um, people have this kind of jobs because um, it is uh, uh, someone that is part of the family, is a friend of the family or something like that. And it is not a, 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 like a very formal job, like a job that we can uh, have when we are like adults with a contract and something like that. Next, 74% percent of adults between the age of 18 and 35 marry. Yes, I think it is the same or a little bit more, more than 74 here in the country. And 27% of adults between the age of 18 and 34 live with their parents. Hmm, I think it's more. Creo que aquí en el país es más el porcentaje de personas que viven a uh, con sus padres entre los 18 y los 34. Creo que es, es mucho más alto, no just like 27%. I think it's more. Now, with this one, we have here the image that we have on the on the video, and now we are going to have a exercise. And in this exercise, we are going to rewrite. Vamos a volver a reescribir las oraciones. Yo tengo un Un par de oraciones son cinco. We are going to see some information based on other countries. Está basado en países del de mundo, no simplemente en El Salvador. Bueno, básicamente no está basado en El Salvador. And we are going to see like percentages. Vamos a ver algunos porcentajes. Y ustedes me van a decir qué porcentaje tendría esta um, esa situación aquí en El Salvador. So, in this case, we are going to think about the situation in our country and we are going to give this percentage to the new sentence. And we are going to change the country because um, we are going to have like countries like China, Australia, the United States, Germany, and yes, again, United States. Así que vamos a cambiar el porcentaje y el país, que obviamente es El Salvador, utilizando los quantifiers que tenemos ahí. So, we are going to see the activity. Ah. 
car, give me a second. Okay. And a little bit here. Good. Okay, we have five different sentences. Number one, it says, in China, 50% of women get married by the age of 22. Number two, in Australia, 87% of married couples have children. Number three, in the United States, zero percent of the people both before the age of 18. Number four, 35% of the people in Germany live alone. Seventy eight percent of American high school students have jobs. So we are going to change the information of these sentences based on the reality of our country. So in this case, you can um, choose one of these sentences and you can rewrite that information. And we are going to write like the counterpart or the, um, the new example in the other part. Vamos a, a dejar un espacio por acá para poder escribir las oraciones que ustedes van a crear. O sea, ustedes van a escoger una de las cinco y la van a volver a reescribir basados en la realidad de nuestro país utilizando los quantifiers. ¿Cómo así? Um, podemos decir in El Salvador and we have the quantifiers on the image. Mm, nearly all of women get married by the age of or in El Salvador many women get married by the age of 22. I don't know you can rewrite the sentence using the quantifiers so 
We are going to have five minutes to rewrite these sentences. And then you are going to write your sentence on the chat. And we are going to search for the five eh, sentences. Vamos a buscar las cinco para poderlas escribir con la, como la otra parte de las cinco que ya tenemos. So, we are going to begin with this exercise and we are going to have five minutes to complete it. Okay, I have three sentences on the chat, so I'm going to give you time to write your sentences or your opinion about the information that we have, and then we are going to write five of the sentences on the document as an example 
of the information that we have there related to the percentage of things that people do in other countries. So, one more minute to complete this uh, information. So, in this minute, you can write your information or your sentence related to the um, the percentages that we have on the screen. And if we don't have more examples in the next minute, I'm just going to write the three that we have on the chat. Okay, I think that is enough. So we are going to write just the examples that we have the, uh, on the chat. So we have four, just four examples. So we are going to see the number one. It says, in El Salvador, no one votes before the age of 18. In this case, we are not going to use the word um, the people. So we with no one is enough. And El Salvador, no one both before the age of 18. Number two, 50% of Salvadorian high school students have a job. Mm. Or we can say in El Salvador, fifty percent of high school students. Have a job. Next one, let's see. In El Salvador, 90% of married couples have a, have two children, okay? Ninety percent of married couples have two children. Uh, 
ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು live alone get merry and merry couple oh we are going to add this one in El Salvador 40.6% of the people finish the university we are going to see Okay. Thank you for your examples. Gracias por los ejemplos. Vamos a ver. Um, so, we are going to begin with the explanation of the quantifiers. You know that um, these words are related to the information that we have or we are not like secure about um if they are like this, because in this case, we are not sure that um, if 50% of the high school students have a job here in, in our country, we are not uh, sure if the 90% of the married couples have just two children. So in this case, it's just like to make some um, numbers and some details related to this information. So we are going to see how can we use these quantifiers and what are the different quantifiers that we have? You know that we have a couple of words on the image that are related to the quantifiers, but also we know um, we need to know how to use them and what is the like the important part about these uh, words. So we are going to begin with this part that is like the general thing about the quantifiers. So related to this one topic, quantifiers. And I think that we are not going to have like enough time to complete them. Um, the next activity. That is the, the activity that we have on the document. So I'm going to do it tomorrow. So we are going to see. So in this case, we are going to talk about the quantifiers before non-count nouns or plural count nouns. Vamos a ver también estos quantifiers tienen que ver con el uso de los nombres contables y de los nombres no contables y nombres plurales contables. Vamos a ver en qué momento lo vamos a utilizar y de qué forma lo vamos a estar utilizando. So, in this case, before noun count nouns, antes de los nombres no contables. Y tenemos ejemplos. Con este ejemplo vamos a aplicar varias palabras para completarlo. En este caso tenemos, when I was a student, I spend, y tenemos diferentes palabras. Little, vamos a hacer como una lista.
a little a great deal of a large amount of and we can use too much or just much Si nos fijamos, tenemos como diferentes opciones con las cuales podemos nosotros hacer nuestras oraciones. No es necesario que lo hagamos solo con un tipo de palabra, así como decir, When I was a student, I spent little time on the computer. O decir, When I was a student, I spent a little time in the computer. Sino que tenemos diferentes opciones que podemos utilizar para esa oración. Y nuestro complemento, podemos decir nuestro complemento, time on the computer. Okay, tenemos two, four, and five. Five different expressions that we can use to explain, to give like this, this information. And you are not just going to use one. We have, when I was a student, I spent little time on the computer. When I was a student, I spent a little time on the computer. When I was a student, I spent a great deal of time on the computer. When I was a student, I spent a large amount of time on the computer. And when I was a student, I spent too much time on the computer. We have like two different um, ideas. We have a, one that is when we don't have an, enough time or we don't spend a lot of time on the computer. And the second idea is in which we spent a lot of time on the computer. Si se fijan, tenemos como los, las dos caras de la moneda, como decimos. Una es cuando nosotros pasamos poco tiempo en la computadora o el segundo, cuando pasamos mucho tiempo en la computadora. Los primeros dos son como el poco tiempo que pasamos en la computadora y ya a partir de a great deal of, es cuando vamos subiendo, ¿verdad? El nivel o el tiempo que pasamos en la computadora. So in this case, we have like, two different um, like expressions to, to say different uh, sentences. Now, we're going to see the second one. And in this case is before plural count nouns. Aquí vamos a ver los quantifiers que podemos utilizar antes de un nombre plural y contable. And in this case, we are going to do it at the beginning of the sentence. ¿Por qué? Porque estamos hablando de que nuestro quantifier va antes de un nombre. Y aquí vamos a poner todos nuestros quantifiers al principio y luego vamos a agregar nuestra oración, el nombre, ¿verdad? Que vamos a explicar aquí. Tenemos few, a few, several, quite a few, a large number of, a majority of, and the last one, many. And all of these sentences we can use for examples like this one. Few people say that they use text messaging.
few people say that they use text messaging. Pocas personas dicen que utilizan los mensajes de texto. A few people say that they use text messaging. Several people say that they use text messaging. Quite a few people say that they use text messaging. A large number of people say that they use text messaging. A majority of people say that they use text messaging and many people say that they use text messaging. It's the same case with the first one, but in this case, it's like the amount of people. Aquí estamos viendo como la cantidad, ¿verdad? Primero empezamos con menos y luego vamos a más. Un par de personas, unas cuantas, eh, varias personas dicen que no utilizan los, o que ellos utilizan los mensajes de texto. Y luego una gran cantidad de, la mayoría de personas, muchas personas dicen que usan los mensajes de texto. So, in this case, it says that the, the quantifiers come before nouns or noun phrase and are used to talk about amount. amount. Entonces, siempre van a ir antes de los nombres o de las frases que llevan estos nombres o sujetos y eh, obviamente se utiliza para hablar de cantidades. Y ellos están respondiendo unas preguntas bien específicas. Las preguntas son, how much or how many? Por eso es que utilizamos este tipo de palabras, porque no estamos tan seguros de las cantidades, pero sí estamos hablando de ellas. Y respondemos, how much or how many? Because we are talking about the uh, count and noun count nouns. Next one, it says that these quantifiers don't express um, exact amount, but only indicate whether the amount is large or is small, and they are used before either non can nouns or plural count nouns, but not both. Es lo que decíamos, estamos expresando cantidades de las cuales no estamos seguros, eh, pero sí estamos hablando de más y de menos, pero no algo exacto. Si ya fueran cantidades exactas, pues ya sería otro tipo de palabras las que estaríamos utilizando. Estas solo se utilizan cuando no estamos seguros de la cantidad, pero sí podemos hablar de menos y más. Y ya decíamos que van antes de los nombres eh, plurales contables y los nombres no contables, pero nunca pueden ir con ambos.
Okay, in this case, we have the first part of the quantifiers. And tomorrow we are going to end with this topic. And remember that tomorrow is the last session of this uh, course. So we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow on the last session. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Good night, bye. Good night. See you tomorrow. See you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.